This is Dror Moshe Kasuto. Shalom Aleichem. So again we're learning from this amazing book, Sefer Hayashar, the book of the honest, the book of the straight, the book that can straighten um, the midot, the attributes of a person, and is telling us the real true history of our holy nation, the nation of Israel, and telling us about um, like the beginning of, of like we're going to read learn a little bit about what happened with Abram Abraham so um, Cush was one of the children of Ham Ham was one of the children of Noah Noah built the ark and saved his family from from the flood and Cush the son of Ham the son of Noah um, got married when he was old and he gave birth, she, his wife gave birth to a child named Nimrod. And Nimrod in the holy language of Hebrew means we're going to rebel. And he was um, fighting against heaven, against the truth. And he was a very evil person, rebelling the truth and the creator and crying against God. That's what it's written about him. And his father, he loved him a lot. And he gave him the leather cloaks that God made for the man and his wife, for Adam and Eve, when they walked out of the Garden of Eden. So Cush, the son of Ham, the son of Noach, inherited those holy cloaks of Adam and Eve, and he gave them to Nimrod. And after Adam passed away, those cloaks had been given to Hanoch, the son of Yared. And when Hanoch went up to heaven, so he gave them to Metushelach, his son. Before Metushelach passed away, he gave them to Noach, and Noach put them in his ark. And when they went out from the ark, so Ham stolen um, they could not, those cloaks from Noah, his father. And he hid them from his brothers. And when Ham brought, um, when, when Cush been, uh, been born out of the world, so he gave him those cloaks in hidden, in a secret. And he also hid it, hid it from his brothers and from his brothers. And when he had Nimrod, finally, those evil, that, that evil person came out to the world, so he gave him those cloaks because he loved him so much. And Nimrod grew up, and when he was 20 years old, he wore those cloaks and became very powerful when he wore them. And he went and he was hunting, and he was hunting in the fields, and he was hunting the animals, and built altars and he was sacrificing the altars and, and he was fighting and he and he was fighting for his siblings for his brothers and all of his enemies died um, in front of him and he was succeeding in all of his wars and he conquered the land and he was like the governor like the king and everyone would bless their children in his generation to be strong like him. Everyone would say, I bless you to be strong like Nimrod, and to succeed like Nimrod. He was so known, his success was so famous to everyone that everyone were blessing their children to become like him, even though that he was an enemy um, of Hashem. When he was 40 years old, there was a huge war and he fought and killed hundreds of people and there are many many details here that I don't want to get in, into and the main thing I wanted to say is that he became um, the main king on the land between people and Terach, the son of Nahor, he was one of the generals in the army of Nimrod and he was about to become the father of Abraham, of Abraham, our father. And he was one of the generals in the army of Nimrod. 
And he was very important in the eyes of Nimrod, and the king Nimrod liked him, and the ministers respected him. And Terach took a woman, a wife. Her name was Amtelai Bat Karnevo. Amtelai, the daughter of Karnevo. And it's a known thing that if every person in the world wants to be saved by uh, from a certain plague or sickness or problem or whatever, so to mention the name Amtelai Bat Karnevo, Amtelai, the mother of Abraham, Amtelai Bat Karnevo, named after her father, the daughter of Karnevo, is a blessing and a, a very known, like a holy trick to say and to mention the name of Amtelai Bat Karnevo several times. In certain books I read 11 times, in different books I read even 13 or 17 times, but like you can feel free to mention her name as many times as you want. There's no prohibition on mentioning her name more than you should. Just to ask for, for salvation by the merit of Amtelai Bat Karnevo. Amtelai, the mother of Abraham, the daughter of Karnevo. Vatar Eshet Terach, and she gave birth um, when Terach was 70 years old, and Terach called his son Abram, Avram, without the letter He that had been given to Avraham later on. So he was not Abraham, he was Abram, Avram. Because the king made him to be on top of all the rest of the ministers in those days. So he was like the greatest one of the ministers of Nimrod. And in that night when Abram been born, all the servants of Terach and all the wise um, advisors of Nimrod and all of his wizards and all of his magicians came to the house of Terach and they were very happy in that night because a child was born to Terach. And when they all went out, all the wise people and the ministers and the magicians came out of the house of Terach. They looked to the sky in that night to the stars and they saw one gigantic star, a very large star, came from the east side of the sun and was running in the sky like a falling star and was swallowing four stars from four wings of heaven, of the sky. Suddenly a huge star came and from one side to the other swallowing four huge stars it was so gigantic and it took four stars with him while he ran. So all those wise people and all the ministers and all the, the, the magicians were like in shock from that sight and they realized the thing they saw and they said to each other, there is no other interpretation except of that that child that born, was born in that night to Terach, when he will grow, he will be so strong and powerful that he will inherit the wide land him and his children forever and he and his seed will kill great kings and they will inherit their lands so all those people came to their houses and in the morning they all came and spoke about what it, they saw in the next day and they saw they said we must say what we saw to the king because if we won't tell the king one day he will ask us why ha why you were hiding it from me and he will kill them all so they were afraid and therefore they went to tell the king what they saw and the solution and the interpretation of what they saw for them to save their own skin so they went to the king and bowed to him and told him may the king live may the king live we heard that there was a son born to Terach, the son of Nahor, your general, and we went to his house and we ate bread and drink and were happy with him. And when we went out, we saw a huge star, whatever, told him all the story. And we were very scared and we checked that side that we saw and we realized the interpretation, the real one, is that that child will grow and he will be huge and he will kill all the kings on earth and he will inherit their lands, him and his children, for, for good, forever. 
Now please the king, our master, we are telling you this and this is the right interpretation. Maybe you should give a huge price to buy the child from his father and we will kill that child before he will grow and multiply. And then we all gonna die, us and our children and our seed because of him. So the king heard them and he liked their suggestions and he sent to call to Terach. Terach came to him and the king told Terach, Nimrod said to Terach, I heard that you had a baby boy yesterday night and they saw in the sky when he was born that he will break and he will kill kings. They saw the, that's their interpretation of their side, the, the, the side they saw in the skies, in the sky, in the, in the stars. So I'm asking you now, give me your child, I want to kill him before he will kill us all and I will fill your house with gold and silver. So Terach told the king, I heard you, my master, my king, everything that you want to do, you can do. But please, my king, let me tell you what happened to me yesterday. And then I will answer you on what you said. So the king told him, okay, please explain. So Terach said to the king, a person named Ayon ben Morad came to my house yesterday night and he told me, give me your greatest horse and the best horse that the king gave you and I'll pay you, I'll fill your house with gold and silver and food and you will give me your best horse, the one that the king gave you. So I told him, listen, I need to consult with the king if I should do it or not. I'm not doing anything before I'll consult Nimrod the king. So now Nimrod, I'm asking you, Terach is saying, let me know what you think. Should I give the best horse I received from you for money and gold for silver? So Nimrod looked at him and told him, Are you stupid? You don't have power of understanding to do something like that. Are you lack of money? Are you lack of gold that you're thinking even to give that great horse that I gave you? That there is no better horse than that horse in the wide land? When the king finished talking, so Terach answered to him, so look what you told me right now. So please, what's the difference between what you told me to do about that horse to the thing that you're asking me to do about my son? You're telling me, give me your son and I'll kill him and I'll pay you with silver and gold. What I'm gonna do with silver and gold after the death of my child? Who's gonna inherit all the silver and gold? When I'll die, all that gold and silver will, be, will come back to you because that's my only child. When the king Nimrod heard those words of Terach and that tale that he brought about the king, he was furious and he wanted to kill. When Terach saw that the king is so angry and want to kill him, so he said, listen, everything that I have, you can take. Even my son, you can take him with no price. And also, here it's written, I was wrong when said it was his only child, but he wanted to inherit everything to Abram. But now he's saying that Abram had those two brothers that were elder than him. And he told him, and also you can take his two larger uh, kids, elder kids, brothers. And the king said to Terach, no, I want to buy your son in price. I don't want to receive him from you as a gift. I want to pay. Terach answered, listen, please listen to me. Let me three days until I talk to my wife and convince her and I will make her understand that it's the best thing to do. So the king Nimrod listened to Abram, it listened to Terach and gave him three days. In the moment Terach <coughs> went out of the palace, he went to, the, to his house, talked to his family, explained to them that they are in a huge risk and he didn't know what to do and he was explaining to them that they are about to be killed by the king if they won't fill his commandment. So what did he do? In the same time that his wife gave birth, so also one of his female slaves gave birth. So he switched the babies and he brought the other baby of his slave to the king. And he took the prize for that king and he 
sent Abram to a cave and to hide him over there in that cave. Immediately when the king Nimrod took that child, he smashed him down to the ground and killed him. He was so evil because he thought that's Abram. And he thought that that's it, the decree been canceled and he forgot about it because Hashem made this miracle to have a replacement for Abram to save him from Nimrod. And Terach took Abram, his son, and his wife, the mother of Abram, and hide them both in a cave. And they had their food and their water, and every month he would bring more supply, more food. And she was um, nursing and taking care of Abram in the cave. And he grew up in the cave for 10 years. Only when Abram was 10 years old, he like completely came out of the cave. And when all the ministers and all the slaves and all the magicians of the king um, totally forgotten about Abram and that prophecy. You see the life story of a righteous man starts with difficulties, continue with boulders and obstacles and finishing in, in great wars. That's the real story of the righteous ones. Thank you so much. We hope you enjoyed this video very much. Please now remember to subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit amuna.com. May your light shine always and your requests should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.